educational project Naurok here today, this evening. Uh, today we are going to speak with you about effective games and activities in the English classroom. So first of all, for me to uh, know if you can hear me well and if you can see me well, I would like uh, you to answer the following question uh, in the chat box. Do you use language games at the lessons of English? So uh, if you do, please put a plus or just answer yes in the chat box. I'm waiting for your answers. Okay, yes, I can see some pluses, and I'm very happy that you do use a lot of language games at the Lessons of English, but at the same time, I hope that you will learn uh, some more language games today, and I'm going to share with you the games and activities that I have tried and tested at my Lessons of English, and that I find especially effective at the Lessons, because we know that uh, not every game and not every activity uh, brings teachers and students uh, what we really need. Uh, not every activity has the desired outcome. So I'm going to share with you only those games and activities that I have tried and found especially effective. So first of all, probably a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Hanna Dudic, and I am a teacher of English and a vice principal at Taras Shevchenko Gymnasia in Kropivnitsky. Uh, I am Global Teacher Prize uh, 2017 Top 50 finalist, uh, a speaker of Global Education and Skills Forum in uh, 2018 and 2019, and an ambassador of uh, a number of educational uh, programs. Uh, for teachers, such as Varki Teacher Ambassador, Penpal Schools Ambassador, Scientix Ambassador, 100 Ambassador and 100 Country Lead, and also Neoport and National Geographic Certified Teacher. And uh, uh, being an ambassador of uh, quite a big number of educational programs gives me uh, the opportunity to um, communicate with uh, teachers from different countries, not only teachers of English, but the language of communication is usually English. And from these wonderful educators from all over the world, I learn about different activities that they use to make their learning interesting, um, to make it fun. Uh, and a lot of my uh, games, language games, uh, were also borrowed from uh, fellow teachers from different countries. Uh, some of them are teachers of English and some of them are teachers of other subjects, but some activities can be modified for different uh, teachers. So what we are going uh, to speak about today. First of all, we are going to define uh, a language game. So we are going to speak with you about what is a language game. Uh, I'm going to share with you some tips uh, how to make a game effective. Uh, we are going to speak about fun activities for warming up. Uh, some grammar games, some vocabulary games, and some games for revision. And finally, I'm going to share with you a gamified approach to homework, new approach to homework that I tried with my students. Uh, so first of all, there is a question, what is a language game? Uh, you know that uh, for children, uh, in the primary school and uh, in the secondary school, a game is probably uh, the most typical way of learning about the world outside. So that is why uh, giving them the opportunity to play at the lesson is really important uh, because this is their natural uh, activity, the activity from which they learn. I really like the definition uh, which I found. Uh, on the website called Lexico, powered by Oxford, and it says that a game uh, involving the repetition or creation of words and sentences, etc., in order to facilitate the language, uh, the learning of a language, is a language game. So it is not just any kind of game that can be used at the lesson, but it is 
uh, a kind of game which helps you to facilitate the learning of a language. So when children are repeating or creating words and sentences uh, or even paragraphs uh, in a game at the lesson, they are learning the language. Uh, they are uh, having their drills naturally. They are uh, repeating the structures that you want to, them to learn and to memorize. Uh, they are trying to uh, make the sentences using their desired grammar patterns. Uh, so this is a kind of a, a language game that usually teachers uh, would use at the lessons of uh, English language and any other foreign language. Uh, any game, even if it is a game that students, that uh, children uh, play outside in the street, needs to have clear rules. And if you want your language game in the classroom to be effective, first of all, you must introduce uh, clear rules of the game. Uh, if your students are familiar with the game, uh, if you play uh, this game not for the first time, if you play it regularly, uh, they probably already know the rules. But if it is a new game for your students, I would probably advise you uh, put the rules on the blackboard or just print out the rules uh, and uh, give them, uh, give your students the uh, worksheets with the rules or uh, put the rules on the screen of uh, uh, the television in the classroom or on the whiteboard. Uh, just make them visible because if uh, somebody forgets about the next step, step of the game, they will be able to uh, consult this uh, worksheet and uh, uh, the game will flow naturally. Uh, the game should not be, uh, the effective game should not be time consuming because you know we have only 45, le uh, 45 minutes at the lesson and we cannot take up half of the lesson playing a game no matter how fun and how uh, exciting it is. So uh, you should be uh, able to probably like uh, give five, ten minutes uh, for uh, a language game, not more. Uh, depending on what you want to practice, your language game can be uh, introduced at the beginning of the lesson as a warming up activity. Uh, it can be introduced during the presentation part of the lesson when you present new vocabulary or new grammar. Uh, here are mostly uh, games where students can drill uh, the necessary structure will be used. Uh, you can use uh, the language game during the stage of uh, production when you want your students to produce uh, sentences and words themselves using the games uh, that you can make this activity fun. You can use language games, uh, for example, during the lessons of revision when you want to revise uh, the vocabulary or grammar uh, and prepare for the test. Uh, or you can even make your homework, uh, turn your homework into a game and uh, uh, just introduce, introduce gamified homeworks, depending on uh, what your uh, aim as a teacher uh, is, uh, how, how you would like to use the game. Uh, but no matter at what stage of the lesson you use it, it should not be time consuming, of course. Uh, you should be able to track the time. So it's really important to. Uh, somehow uh, set uh, the time when you start the game and keep it in mind when you want to finish the game. Uh, if your students want to play more, you can tell them that uh, if they enjoy the game, you can play it, uh, for example, tomorrow or the other day or uh, during the other lesson. Uh, and of course, your game should have a purpose to practice something, to drill something, to introduce something. So. Uh, or maybe it can be a, a game which introduces some physical activity when you want your students to stand up from their desks and to move a little bit. So uh, these kinds of games uh, also have place uh, in, uh, during our lessons. And I will tell you about some of such games as well that I use. Uh, and of course, your language games, effective language games must be fun because that is what the game is. It is usually fun and students want to have fun uh, when they play a game. Uh, if you turn the game into a regular um, exercise, it is not a game anymore. It is just a, a drill or an exercise or an activity. Uh, 
it should be age appropriate because if a game is too difficult uh, for the students of a certain class, uh, they will not enjoy it. And uh, you will turn uh, the process of playing into torture because they will not understand the rules. Uh, and of course, the game, as for me, I think it should be easy to prepare because you shouldn't take it shouldn't take uh, too much time for you to um, prepare what is necessary for the game, like uh, uh, scissors, pencils, cutouts. Uh, it shouldn't take too much time to prepare. Just probably a few minutes. Uh, it is. Uh, made to save your teacher's time, but not to uh, make your uh, preparation for the lesson uh, even more difficult. So I have prepared the games for you today. Uh, I would like to share the games for you today, which have exactly uh, these qualities, which are fun, clear, not time consuming, age appropriate and easy to prepare and sometimes can be modified for uh, different uh, grammar structures and uh, different uh, uh, students of different ages. Uh, first of all, how uh, can you uh, check if your students are not too loud during uh, the process of playing? How can you divide them into groups if you need to divide them uh, for groups during uh, your game? Yes. Uh, as for me, I found one very effective tool, which is called Classroom Screen. Can you please give me some reaction in uh, the chat? Who has ever used the Classroom Screen at the lessons? If you have ever uh, used this uh, online tool uh, at the lessons, please put a plus in the chat box for me to know that uh, you are already familiar with it. Um, I don't see too many pluses, so I think that probably this tool is new for you. So wonderful, I think that uh, you will be uh, really happy to use this tool, uh, not only while uh, playing games, language games, but uh, in general for classroom management. Let me tell you what you can do with this uh, online tool. So classroom screen, is an online tool. Uh, you can find it if you follow the link, which you can see now uh, on this slide. And this is uh, mostly just a screen, which has got lots of different sub tools, which help the teacher mm, to man uh, which uh, help the teacher manage the class. So first of all, uh, it has got a random group generator. If you put down the names of all the students in the class uh, to this tool, it will help you uh, generate uh, subgroups, divide your students into subgroups uh, randomly. It has got the dice, which uh, can help you, for example, decide who will be the first uh, to uh, have a go in a game. Uh, it has got a sound level sensor. That is a really cool tool. You know that when students are playing a game, sometimes they get too excited and uh, the noise level in the classroom gets really high uh, and you need to calm them down. This sound level sensor um, uses the sensor, the microphone of your computer and uh, it shows on the screen how loud your students are. They see this uh, red uh, bar on the screen and uh, they can sometimes even hear a sound, a beep, that uh, attention, you are too loud, uh, calm down a little bit and they start speaking a little bit quieter. It has got a QR code generator so if you need to redirect your students to external websites, if you want to play the games like in, uh, for example, um, uh, in uh, uh, some games like um, uh, Kadoo, for example, you can uh, use this QR code. Uh, Kahoot, for example, uh, you can use the QR code. Uh, and your students can uh, just uh, scan this QR code with the help of their telephones and uh, go and do the, text, the test. Uh, it has got uh, a text box for game rules, so you can just print the game rules there and keep them on the screen. Uh, it has got traffic light, red, yellow, green, and you can signal your students uh, that if, for example, the uh, light is red, uh, your students can uh, not speak, so just write or keep silent. 
uh, or work silently with uh, go on with their task if the light is yellow just be ready soon we will discuss uh, the topic if the light is green you can just uh, stand up or you can come to your neighbor or you can do something like that uh, it has got work symbols uh, which show what exactly should be going on right now and uh, it has got a timer and a stopwatch so let me now show you the video uh, I uh, prepared a video from uh, my screen uh, how uh, you can use this uh, classroom management tool how you can use the classroom screen uh, so you just uh, uh, follow the link uh, you uh, see this screen and you can choose whatever gadget uh, whatever tool uh, you need uh, on this classroom screen so the first one uh, is uh, this name uh, generator where you type the names of all the students and then randomly create subgroups uh, then the second one you can see this uh, one die or two dice or three dice and uh, you can just choose who will be the first who will uh, go on then this sound sensor uh, which can monitor uh, the sound uh, the, uh, how loud your students are while doing uh, the assigned task and it is really cool I really enjoy it uh, you can also add some links to videos, images, etc. The QR code generator for games like Kahoot. Uh, then uh, you can draw something on the whiteboard if you need to draw immediately. And it is all on uh, one screen, classroom screen. You don't need a whiteboard for this. Uh, you can just open this screen from your laptop from your classroom computer if you have it in class uh, or you can use uh, just a screen uh, of your projector and a laptop depending on what you have uh, in your classroom these work symbols are really cool uh, they show you what your students can do what they are doing right now they are working together or keeping silent or whatever the traffic lights uh, which help you to signal uh, your students what they are sh uh, doing now uh, the timer you can set the time how much time you give them for the game like two minutes for example when the time is out the signal uh, goes on and uh, your students hear that it's time to stop then uh, the stopwatch uh, how much time uh, each activity takes up and uh, the regular clock uh, there are also some more uh, tools there like the calendar uh, or you can choose the uh, picture of the screen uh, just depending on uh, what picture you want you may even choose the picture which uh, corresponds to uh, the topic of your game or the topic of the lesson uh, so this classroom screen really helps uh, you a lot uh, when you introduce games into classroom learning as for me the most uh, useful tool here in the classroom screen is uh, this noise level sensor which uh, helps you to keep uh, to calm down your students and uh, the timer which helps the teacher to track the time uh, now uh, what else uh, can we do with our students we have chosen the tool which helps us to manage our classroom while uh, playing language games at the lessons now let us get down to uh, the games themselves uh, the first part of the lesson the beginning of the lesson is usually a warming up uh, if you want your students to uh, warm up a little bit to uh, remember that they are now at the lesson of english uh, to forget about their native language to get excited with the lesson you usually use some fun and quick activity uh, to break the ice they are called icebreakers or warming up activities one of my favorite activities which i usually use with the students uh, of the new group that i take uh, in september uh, is called speaking m and m's it is very easy and you can use it not only while uh, getting acquainted with a new classroom but also while studying uh, different topics you just need to change uh, the task a little bit so the activity the original activity uh, goes like this you need a packet of M&M candies of different colors and you need a color code on the board on the whiteboard or on the blackboard 
you need, of course, clean hands, especially now at the time of uh, corona and quarantine, when our hands should be clean by all means. Uh, so ask your students to go uh, and wash their hands during the break because they will need to take the candies with their hands. Hands must be clean. You need napkins or paper plates uh, to put candies on. And you need to think carefully about the questions. Uh, if it is the um, icebreaker when you want your students to tell you about themselves, if you want to meet a new group of students, so your questions would probably be like this. If you take a brown candy, tell me about your family. One or two sentences. If you take a red candy, tell me about your hobby. If you take a yellow candy, tell me about your favorite animal. If you take a green candy, uh, tell me please, uh, what do you like uh, at school? If you take a blue candy, tell me please about your best friend. And if you take an orange candy, tell me please about your favorite food. Uh, make it clear for students that you don't want them to tell you the whole topic, like 10 sentences. One or two sentences would be enough. You want to get to know your students, that is all. And also make a clear rule. Do not eat the candy before you tell the sentence. So first, tell me the sentence according to your color code and then eat the candy. Uh, that is why they need clean hands and napkins. They put the uh, candy on the napkin or on the paper plate, tell you the sentence according to the color code, and that then eat the candy. Uh, you can modify the game, uh, and uh, if you are using it with not with the students who are new um, comers to your group, not with a new group of students, but if you want to practice a new vocabulary, uh, just choose the questions according to the topic you are studying. For example, if you are uh, studying a topic of school and school subjects, choose uh, six questions according to the color code, uh, and all of them will be connected with uh, the topic. For example, uh, if it is school, let it be, what is your favorite school subject and why? Uh, how many lessons, so red color, how many lessons do you have... Uh, on Monday, for example, uh, yellow color. Tell us uh, what are your favorite activities at the lesson of uh, history, for example. Green color. Uh, what uh, school uh, subjects do you have, for example, on Fridays? Or blue color. Uh, tell us what uh, objects do you have in your school bag? Uh, what things do you have in your school bag? Uh, just whatever. Uh, depending on the level of difficulty of your textbook and uh, depending on the topic discussed in your textbook. You can choose the questions connected practically to any topic, like um, animals, uh, sports and hobbies, uh, just uh, favorite food, uh, whatever. You name it and you can just uh, modify this activity. But remember that uh, you need to keep uh, all class focused. So tell them that... Uh, after everybody uh, tells their sentence and eats their candy, uh, the class should be ready for a post-speaking uh, discussion. Uh, and you can introduce such questions like, oh, uh, let us see who listened to uh, the classmates. So who can remember uh, some details, like who, for example, uh, uh, who has the most unusual pet at home? Oh, it was uh, like uh, Helen, for example, yes? Or who, uh, whose hobby is swimming? Uh, it was uh, Michael, for example, so whatever. So you need to keep the class focused because uh, very often children, uh, after telling, uh, after answering at the, at the lesson, uh, do not listen to their uh, classmates uh, and uh, they are just too busy thinking about uh, their own sentence. So uh, that is... Uh, one of my most favorite warming up activities, and I'm happy to share it with you. Hope you can try it too. Uh, of course, there are more M&M candies in the packet than students in the classroom, so it would be a nice bonus to eat the rest of the candies uh, at the end of the class. When students are leaving the classroom, I usually uh, give them several candies, each of them, uh, and we eat up the whole packet uh, as they leave after the bell rings. Uh, 
when we speak about grammar games, uh, probably uh, learning grammar occupies a big part of our um, curriculum uh, in English, uh, at the lessons of English. And uh, uh, my favorite books, the books from which I draw my inspiration are Grammar Games and More Grammar Games by Mario Rinvolucri. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I pronounce his uh, surname correctly, but that's how it says. Uh, most of the games which I found uh, effective were taken from uh, his books, and they are really, really great. They're really cool. If you ever come across these books, uh, just uh, use them, read them, uh, buy them. They are really, really cool. You will not regret it. Uh, so one of the easiest uh, grammar games, which does not require uh, much preparation, is called sit down then. It can also be modified uh, for different types of grammar structures. First of all, you need to choose a grammar structure that you want to practice. Let us say uh, it can be past simple. Ask all of your students to stand up. Uh, then uh, tell them that you are going to ask them questions. And if their answer is positive, if their answer to your question is positive, uh, they give you a short answer. Say, for example, yes, I did, if you are practicing past simple. Uh, and uh, they should sit down. Uh, then the game is played until everyone is uh, in the class is sitting. Uh, then you can choose a different structure or you can let your students lead the game and make up sentences. Uh, first, you choose the students who are more confident in uh, the grammar structure that you are learning and can produce sentences quickly. And uh, then you can ask those who are less confident to uh, follow up. Uh, or you can even ask your students to prepare sentences or questions uh, ahead as a homework. So, uh, for example, you can ask uh, special questions, starting with who, or you can ask yes-no questions, starting with did, for example. Uh, let me give you an example. So, imagine that all uh, the students are standing, and uh, you ask them uh, such a question. Uh, who watched TV yesterday? Or did you watch TV yesterday? Depending on what kind of questions you want to practice. If your students say, yes, I did, you say, sit down then. And those who said yes would sit down. Uh, and uh, go on, go on, go on until uh, the whole class is sitting. Uh, you can practice here practically any kind of activity that you want. It can be present perfect, who has ever been uh, to some place. It can be present continuous, so who is reading a book at home now, or who is, who's, uh, for example, mom is cooking now, or whose father is uh, working now, or whatever. Uh, it can be uh, structures with can. Who can jump? Who can uh, who can uh, speak three foreign languages? Who can jump uh, uh, two meters uh, high or long or whatever, uh, depending on what you want to check. To check, and as I said, don't forget to uh, give your students the chance to be the game leads, uh, because if you want them not only to listen to the target structure but also to produce the target structure, so they need to speak, they need to produce the sentences. So give them a chance to be uh, the leads of the game. Uh, you can also make it a part of the uh, game when after playing the game with you as a lead, you will give them two or three minutes to write down their own questions and then uh, ask them to take turns and play uh, the game, be the, uh, the game leads for uh, the rest of the class. Uh, possible grammar structures here, like who watched a film yesterday, who has ever seen a comet, who can cook, and you can practice target structures, and you can uh, introduce some physical activity at the lesson, because your students are standing up, sitting down, uh, moving, uh, you can use this game uh, in the middle of the lesson when uh, you see that your students are too tired of uh, doing some exercises in uh, the textbook, in the workbook, and they need to move a little bit. So you can introduce this game uh, in the middle of the lesson as a physical activity game. So it will combine both uh, drilling a new structure and uh, uh, 
given them the opportunity to move at, at the lesson a little bit. Uh, now, one of my favorite vocabulary games is uh, taken from uh, one of my favorite websites, which is called Learn English Teens British Council. If you go to this website, Learn English Teens British Council, you may find there are lots of lots of useful material. Can you please uh, give me the idea in the chat box? Uh, do you use Learn English British Council resources? If you do, please uh, give me a plus uh, in the chat box. If you use Learn English Teens British Council, Learn English Kids British Council, or simply Learn English British Council resources. I'm waiting for the pluses. Uh, yeah, I see that some of you do. S lots of pluses. Wonderful. Uh, so I hope that you uh, have come across this activity uh, on the Learn English Teens British Council uh, website. If you haven't, uh, please uh, try to search for it. Uh, the game is called What Is It? Actually, it is a collection of close-up pictures uh, of different objects. Uh, some of them are f uh, different kinds of food, something that you can eat, like fruit, vegetables, uh, some kinds of food like sushi, for example, or whatever. Uh, or uh, I also found there a lot of uh, close-ups of uh, gadgets, technology, like uh, headphones, a microphone, uh, like uh, USB flash drive, whatever. And uh, some close-ups of animals. Uh, it is not just a photograph, it is a close-up. So if you are looking at the photo, uh, it's not like you see immediately uh, what it is. You need to guess. Uh, and uh, usually when we study uh, a certain topic, when we learn uh, vocabulary, uh, topical vocabulary, for example, uh, f the topic food, I have chosen three pictures from uh, the website. Uh, the first one is uh, actually the stone of uh, fruit, yeah? The second, or the stone of uh, a peach, yes? The second picture is uh, a cherry, you can see it. And the third one is cauliflower. Uh, so you show uh, your students this uh, close-up picture and you ask them, uh, students, can you please guess what is it? Uh, you choose the uh, pictures which are connected to the topic of your uh, unit, of your lesson. Food, technology, animals, whatever. Uh, it is very simple. It is really fun uh, because uh, at the same time you practice uh, topical vocabulary and uh, you have fun, you try to guess what it is because some pictures... Uh, some pictures are quite clear, but some you, need, you really have to use your imagination to figure out what it is. Uh, you will need a, a TV to project the picture or uh, a personal computer uh, or a laptop uh, for you to just to go to this website and show it. Uh, if you don't have such equipment at, uh, uh, at your disposal in the class, you can print out... Uh, these pictures and use uh, just A4 paper printouts in class. Uh, it's even better because uh, you can keep them uh, in the files and uh, use them later uh, for other activities. Uh, the uh, advantage of using the website uh, and uh, uh, just showing these pictures uh, on the screen of a TV or personal computer is uh, that after your students uh, try to guess, you can open the answer, which is, uh, you can reveal the answer, which is usually uh, underneath the picture, and your students can see uh, the whole picture, uh, not just the close-up, but the regular picture, and uh, see if they are right or wrong. Uh, it is just more fun. But uh, at the same time, um, if you do not have a TV or a uh, personal computer, you can use the printout, and uh, it will be as fun as just watching these pictures uh, on TV or PC. Uh, so if you have used uh, Learning English British Council but haven't seen this particular game, I do advise you to uh, go to the website and find the game and uh, you will not regret it. Another game, vocabulary game, that I really like is called Fill the Board. Uh, it is also very easy. 
it does not require any uh, extra gadgets or equipment. The only thing that you need for this game is a traditional blackboard or whiteboard and a piece of chalk or uh, a marker, a uh, felt tip pen for a whiteboard. And uh, you need a set of vocabulary uh, covered in the unit. So first of all, in order to prepare for this game, you need to choose the target vocabulary, uh, the uh, words that you learned in the unit. Of course, not all the words covered in the unit, not all new vocabulary, but uh, just choose, for example, 10 words that you would really like to uh, revise with your students. Uh, and please make sure that you choose different parts of speech. If you choose 10 words, let's say uh, three would be nouns, three would be verbs, and three would be adjectives. Uh, put them randomly on the blackboard. Then uh, brainstorm with students the names of famous people. Uh, they can be famous people from uh, your town, from our country, uh, from uh, all over the world, famous bloggers, famous uh, actors, singers, politicians, who, uh, sportsmen, whoever comes to their mind. So put the names of famous people on the blackboard too. Uh, you will need like, let's say, uh, five names of uh, famous people. Then you need to brainstorm some places. Any places which your students would like to add to the blackboard. They can be uh, like easy places, like local park. Or they can be some famous places, like uh, let's say uh, Trafalgar Square or whatever. Uh, Put all these places, or, or it can be even the school uh, hall or uh, our classroom of English, whatever. Whatever your students say, just brainstorm places. Put down five places also, names of five, pla five places on the blackboard. And tell the students that now their task is to make sentences using at least two words from the blackboard or from the whiteboard. Uh, naturally, they will need... Uh, the name of a famous person, because a sentence should have a subject, yes? Who uh, is the doer of the action? They will need uh, the place, because where uh, the play, uh, something is taking place. And they will need the words that uh, you have chosen from their unit. Nouns, verbs, and adjectives. You can make uh, the task more difficult. You can tell them that they should use not just two words, uh, in one sentence, two words from the blackboard. But they can, should use, for example, three words from the blackboard uh, in one sentence. When your students make up a sentence using two or three or four, whatever, how many you want uh, to tell them uh, to use, uh, you just wipe off uh, the words that have been used already. And uh, as the game goes on, it becomes more and more difficult to make up sentences uh, using the words that are left on the blackboard. Uh, they can, of course, use not only these uh, two or three words, they can introduce more vocabulary because for uh, to make a sentence, they need some more words. But the rule is that by all means, there should be two or three words from uh, the blackboard. Uh, the sentences, why is it, uh, why is this game really successful with students? Because the sentences are usually really funny. Because the doer of the action is usually a famous person. And they come up with, uh, for example, such sentences like, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger was sitting, uh, on uh, the chair in our classroom or something like that. Uh, and they start laughing, but at the same time, they uh, use the target language, for example, furniture, that you are uh, learning now. Uh, for this game, the advantages of this game are the following. You can choose any topical vocabulary you need, any vocabulary covered in the uh, unit, any words or any vocabulary where they make mistakes usually. So you can put it on the uh, blackboard and they will use it again and again and uh, they will just uh, uh, make less mistakes, hopefully. Uh, you can ask your students to make up sentences not just using the vocabulary, but using also target grammar. 
and uh, uh, make the task even more difficult. Tell them, for example, make up a sentence with the words from the blackboard using at least two words from the blackboard in the past simple or in the present continuous. And they will have like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, if you are practicing past simple, uh, visited us, uh, visited our classroom or visited us and came to our uh, local park yesterday or something like this. Uh, and it will be really fun. You can turn it into a competition, not just one by one, but divide students into groups and uh, ask them to work silently for like uh, five minutes and uh, jot down sentences, as many sentences as they can, following the rules that you introduce. And then just uh, pens down or pencils down and one by one read out your sentences and cross out uh, the words which have been used already. Uh, so you can modify the game according to your needs. I have tried it lots of times and uh, I find it really, really successful. Usually this kind of game is used um, not at the beginning, but a little bit later when your students uh, have already learned some vocabulary. Uh, and it is uh, usually a team game when teams compete, but in ca it can be also individual. Uh, where you don't unite your students into groups, but your students just uh, ask and un uh, answer the uh, make up sentences individually and earn, for example, points. And the students who, who makes up uh, the uh, biggest number of sentences, correct sentences, or the sentence with the biggest number of words from the blackboard will uh, be the winner and uh, will get the best mark, for example. It depends uh, on you how to modify the game. Uh, the next game, which is uh, which has the element of gambling to it, I really love it too, and my students really love it. It is called Double or Quits, Correcting Mistakes. This is a kind of game which I usually use uh, at the lessons of revision, when we need to revise grammar and vocabulary before writing a test. Usually, revising vocabulary and grammar turns into a boring uh, routine when you write some exercises and uh, try to recollect the rules, but you can make it fun too. Uh, for this game, you need to uh, form groups consisting of three or four students. Uh, you need to collect uh, some coins. You need a bag of coins. Uh, it can be coins of, uh, it should be, uh, they should be coins of two types. Uh, it depends on uh, what coins you have at home. Uh, it can be, for example, coins of 5 uh, copies and 10 copies. Or it can be 5 and 25. Whatever you, uh, whatever you have at home. Uh, two types of coins. Uh, you will later understand why you need these two types of coins. Uh, and you need um, to have a set of sentences uh, which your students produced during uh, the whole unit, uh, while doing some exercises, with mistakes. So that will be a mix of sentences. Some of them will be uh, correct, some of them will have mistakes. And the sentences with mistakes are usually taken from students' works during the, uh, the, the whole unit. So they are typical mistakes which they make while doing the exercises, while practicing the target grammar structure, while writing essays uh, or whatever. Uh, so when you check their homework, uh, just uh, make it a, a rule to have a special notebook where you put down the sentences from students' works with typical mistakes while uh, covering a certain unit. So uh, prepare, for example, uh, let's say 16 sentences. Some of these sentences will be correct and some of them will have uh, mistakes in them uh, taken from, their, uh, from your students' previous works. Uh, mistakes can be of any type, uh, grammar mistakes or lexical mistakes, but the sentences should cover the material from the unit. You mix right and wrong sen sentences and you do not tell your students how many sentences are right and how many sentences are wrong. You can either put these sentences on the blackboard, just write them down on the blackboard before the lesson begins, or you can give your students 
worksheets with these sentences, like handouts, that they will have one uh, per group of three or four students to work with. So your preparation for this kind of game, a bag of coins and a worksheet with uh, right and wrong sentences. You tell your students that they are going to play in a uh, language casino and uh, they can gamble, they can earn some money, some coins. And it depends on uh, their guesses, if they guess correctly. So uh, this team, your teams of students, uh, teams of three or four, should get together and read the first sentence and decide if the sentence is right or wrong. So the first decision, decision that, the, that the team makes is if the sentence is right or wrong. If they guessed correctly, you give them uh, the coin with uh, the smallest number. Like, for example, if you have five copies and ten copies, you will give them a coin, uh, five copies, five copies coin uh, for the correct guess. So if the sentence is right, there is nothing uh, to do with it. It is just right. And you move to, a ne to the next team. Uh, the next sentence is for the next team. But if the sentence is wrong, the team, and they guessed correctly that this is, uh, this is the wrong sentence, grammatically or lexically wrong. The team has another chance. They can correct the sentence. If they correct the sentence correctly, if they correct the mistake in the sentence correctly, they get 10 copies, in addition to five that they have already earned. So uh, they can earn money with their brains, yes? And... Uh, uh, if they do not correct mistakes in the right way, the other team can correct it, but they will get five copies only, not ten copies, uh, because it was not their turn to correct. It was not their turn to play. So teams take turns to read the sentences and to uh, say if the sentence is right or wrong and to correct the sentences if necessary. You can also modify the game uh, by allowing or not allowing your students to use grammar reference, uh, textbooks, the rules in their uh, exercise books, if you gave them some rules, for example. At the end of the game, uh, the teams count money, count their coins, and uh, you have the winning team the team who gave, uh, who guessed uh, correctly uh, most of the time and who corrected sentences with mistakes uh, successfully. But you should remember that uh, you should set a time limit for students to work. Give them, for example, 10 seconds to decide if the sentence is right or wrong and 20 seconds to correct wrong sentences. Uh, you can modify this game, of course. You can give them more time to decide. Uh, you can ask them to choose the speakers that will be the student who is more willing to speak if you have some shy students. And uh, try to motivate them. Uh, tell them that they are going to uh, act as teachers now. They are going to correct mistakes, but they are also going to earn some money. Uh, my students love this game. It's really cool. And uh, first of all, uh, this game helps them to revise any grammar or vocabulary. Secondly, we usually keep the win in the class in a piggy bank. Uh, and uh, uh, we put it on the shelf uh, next to uh, the door. Uh, and uh, uh, I usually tell my students that if you, for example, forgot money at home and you need some money to get home uh, for, to pay for uh, the route taxi, or if you need money to go to the school canteen and buy yourself some lunch, uh, don't be shy. Take money from this emergency kit and uh, bring back. Uh, don't forget to bring it back tomorrow, for example. So they know that this is our emergency kit. And this is really cool. So with their brains, they earn money for our class emergency uh, kit. Uh, and it's like a really cool uh, idea. Uh, so they don't just take it home. It's uh, The win stays in the classroom. 
Uh, and of course, as I said, you can modify uh, according to the level of uh, knowledge in your class. You can either allow them to use textbooks or not. It depends on you. Uh, the first time when you play the game, probably it would be easier to allow them to use the textbooks. And also I should tell you that this game uh, takes up quite a lot of time. Uh, it should pro it probably takes up like uh, 15 or 20 minutes at the lesson, so be ready. But since it is a revision lesson and you revise vocabulary and you deal with typical mistakes, uh, which your students uh, made before in their uh, homework, so I think probably this is justified, uh, this uh, time-consuming uh, uh, part of the game is justified. Uh, we have moved now to uh, another part of the lesson. We usually give homework at the end of the lesson, but sometimes homework that we uh, give our students is, I can't say boring, but uh, it's more like typical. Uh, it's uh, do the exercise, grammar exercise, or vocabulary exercise, or read and translate the text. And that is all. Uh, I have found one website which gave me a wonderful idea of gamified homework. The website is called uh, On the Same Page ELT. Uh, can you please give me a reaction in the chat box if you have ever used this website? On the Same Page ELT. Can you please put pluses in the chat box uh, if you have used this uh, website? The same website that I'm going to talk about. Uh, yep, some of you have, but most of you haven't. Yes, I'm glad that we have got some pluses and that is really cool. So let me tell you a little bit more about this gamified homework choice board. Uh, this kind of homework develops independent learners because you give your students uh, the right to choose what kind of homework they want to do. And I tried using this type of gamified uh, homework choice board, uh, usually at the end of the unit. So when you do not need um, so urgently to do some uh, drills and practice exercises, when you uh, have the chance to uh, have freedom, actually. You can modify this homework choice board to suit your particular unit and topic of studying. Let me give you some examples of what choice your students have. For example, read a news article about some current event and write 10 interview questions you would ask one of the people involved in the story. You can modify this activity in such a way. If you are studying a particular topic, like, let's say, ecology, you may ask your students to read a news article, let it be in Ukrainian, about ecology, but write questions in English that they would ask one of the people involved in the story. Or it can be the news story, something that they hear in the news. Uh, and they need to write 10 questions that they would ask uh, people involved in the story, real people. But you can choose uh, the topic connected with the topic that you are learning now in the classroom. Ecology, for example, or food, or whatever, whatever you are studying. The next kind of choice. Choose a picture, record a description of it, and send it to your teacher. Make sure that you bring a copy of the picture so that we can try to guess it in class. So uh, the student describes the picture or it, uh, it can be a photograph uh, depicting people doing something uh, connected to the topic of the whole unit. The student records the audio on the uh, telephone, for example, or on the computer, sends the description to the teacher and then reveals the picture or the photograph and you compare the description with the picture. Another uh, idea, choose a word you have learned recently during the unit, for example, that is at least six letters long and write an acrostic poem. Uh, 
each letter of the word uh, should be represented with another word connected with this word. So the student chooses the word from the topical vocabulary and writes the acrostic poem uh, on this word. Listen to a song and read the lyrics. Choose 10 words that are new to you and write a sentence with each of them. Really cool. You can uh, make this task uh, a little bit more connected with uh, the topic that you are studying, with the topic of the unit. Listen to the song connected to the topic of the unit. You can give your students the song connected to the topic that you are studying. Uh, draw a word web with six new words you learned recently and think of five words related to each of these six words. So it will be like a spidergram where uh, five words are related to each of uh, six words. Really cool. Write a different ending to a story or film you have read or watched recently. Provide a summary of the plot first. Uh, Reread a recent composition you have written, a recent essay you have written. Choose 10 mistakes you made and provide the correct answers with an explanation for each of the mistakes. Uh, read a story or graded reader and complete a story map about it. Setting, characters, plot, solution, uh, just a story map. Choose a grammar point you have studied recently and write 10 sentences that illustrate it. Alternatively, create a video explaining that grammar point in your own words. Explain grammar to your fellow students. Read a news article or story or watch a short film. Retell the story from the point of view, from the perspective of uh, people involved in the story. Retell it as one of the characters. You can choose here, retell the uh, text that you read in your unit, uh, in your textbook, from the perspective of one of the characters uh, described in the text. Watch a video, a film or TV show and write a summary including your personal opinion and 10 questions you would ask about it. Write a reflection about how you are doing in English, think, uh, things you find difficult or things you find easy and what your plans are to improve most difficult ones, like self-reflection, really cool. Record yourself reading a short text aloud and send it to your teacher. It can be an easy task for those who are struggling with their English. Uh, ask them to record, to record themselves uh, reading the text from the textbook and uh, send it to the teacher. Send it to you. Uh, choose 10 new activities you have learned recently. Uh, 10 new adjectives, I'm sorry, you have learned recently. And write a synonym and an antonym for each of them. Like small, tiny, big. Uh, develops your vocabulary and uh, asks you to recollect vocabulary that you learned during uh, the lessons uh, in this unit. Create a crossword or puzzle using 15 words from the unit. Choose your own task and uh, why you have chosen to do so, which skills you have practiced and how it will help you to improve your English. Uh, I tried using this homework choice board uh, for the last lesson in the unit before writing the test uh, with my uh, senior classes, with my tense formers. And they really enjoyed this homework choice board because on the one hand, everyone was involved. Everyone did some homework. But on the other hand, they felt independent because they could choose this homework. Uh, I put up this poster uh, in the classroom and I asked them to... Uh, put stickers with their names on the square with the homework choice uh, that they have chosen. Uh, at the end of the lesson, I had uh, their name tags on uh, the squares that they have chosen, and I gave them several days to do their homework. Uh, it, wor it works best when you have uh, several days before the uh, next lesson, like uh, when you have weekends, for example, because some of these types of homework are creative. Uh, some of them involve uh, making uh, audio recordings or making uh, crosswords, uh, and they need, your students need time. So uh, it works best when you uh, give them the opportunity to uh, take uh, their breath and to relax, to have time and to do it properly. Uh, during the next lesson, be sure 
to ask everybody because their works would be real, really, really cool. Um, if they worked, uh, if they chose to work uh, on crosswords, for example, or on word maps, uh, they even do not need to uh, present this kind of homework in front of the whole classroom. You can ask your students to put up their work uh, on the walls of the classroom and uh, give uh, all students in class time to uh, stand up, come up to uh, these creative types of homework and uh, take time to uh, study, for example, the, web, the word web or to do the crossword. Just give them some time to get uh, to know their friends, their classmates' uh, creative work. It works really cool. It develops independent learners and uh, uh, gives you the opportunity uh, to share what you do at the lesson with your students. Not to be like on top of everybody, but uh, to bring them to your level too. Make them independent level uh, learners too. So uh, now this was all that I planned to tell you today, to share with you today, and I am ready for your questions. Uh, I can see some questions uh, in our chat box. Uh, the first question is, or it's more like a comment, uh, interactive whiteboards are not available in most classes. Yes, I do agree with you. Interactive whiteboards are not available in most classes. But uh, most of the activities that I told you about today uh, during the webinar do not require interactive whiteboards. They require mostly uh, just a usual traditional blackboard and a piece of chalk. If you want to be a little bit more uh, up to date, you can print out what you need on worksheets, uh, nothing else, uh, no whiteboards, no computers, nothing, just chalk and uh, analysis of your students' work during the unit. Uh, the question was, uh, are the games team games or individual games? Uh, I think it was about the game, uh, vocabulary game, where the whole board was uh, covered with different vocabulary studied during the unit. Well, uh, it can be, as I said, uh, it depends on uh, your choice. It can be either the individual game or a team game, depending on uh, how you want your students to uh, act and what you want them to practice. If you want them to develop not only uh, their language skills, but also their communication skills, their ability to work together as a team, choose the team game. And if you want them to uh, give you their individual answers and if you want to assess them individually, uh, make it an individual game. How much time the game takes usually? Uh, if it was the question about uh, the game, which was like a language casino game, uh, I said that it takes up like 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, you should be, uh, you should watch your time carefully. You, sh you can use that classroom screen to uh, set the timer. Uh, you can set the time for like uh, 10 uh, seconds for right or wrong answer, 20 seconds for correcting mistakes. And uh, uh, it depends on how many sentences, uh, right and wrong sentences you prepare uh, at the beginning of the game. Uh, you can choose to prepare like six sentences, for example, not 16. Uh, depends on what kind of uh, grammar you are learning, what kind of vocabulary you are learning, and uh, depends on the abilities of your students, the level, uh, language level of your students as well. Uh, can we choose anything else? Uh, I th we can choose anything else. I guess it was a question about uh, coins. Can we choose something uh, not like uh, not only coins? Uh, there was a suggestion in uh, the chat box to use M and M's instead of coins. I think it's up to you. You can use whatever you want. You can use M and M's. You can use uh, like uh, stickers or cutouts or whatever. Just anything to point uh, to count points. Uh, as for me, coins are fun. Uh, if you are not comfortable with money uh, at the lesson, so it's up to you. Don't use the coins. Uh, as you as you probably saw in our uh, lessons, we keep them, as I said, in the piggy bank and we use it as emergency kit for those who left their money at home. Uh, do you often use Quizlet or Kahoot uh, at the lessons? Uh, 
As for Quizlet, not really often. Uh, I choose uh, to use a different type of uh, uh, tool to make quick tests. I use Nearport tests. Uh, but it's up to any teacher because it depends on what uh, tool you are uh, more comfortable with. Uh, as for Kahoot, yes, I do. I do use it a lot at the lessons and children really love it. Uh, what books uh, can we use for more information? Uh, on one of the slides, I already uh, pointed out uh, two of my favorite books, uh, Grammar Games and More Grammar Games by Mario Rinvolucri. Uh, I guess there are a lot of books uh, on the websites and uh, uh, in the bookstores. You can browse for them and I would be really glad if you share in the comments the books that you use and find them uh, effective. So uh, those two were my favorite. Uh, how many lessons in every class have you got? You mean how many lessons per week? Uh, well, uh, usually we got uh, four lessons of English per week uh, in uh, middle school and in high school. Uh, and in uh, the uh, elementary school, that would be three lessons per week. So I guess it's typical for most schools. Uh, do you use only English in classroom or combine it with Ukrainian? Well, with my older students, I try to use mostly English in class uh, because when they learn English, uh, they need it not only from the textbooks, but they need it also uh, like in everyday life. Uh, but uh, with my younger students, I don't teach elementary students. I teach students from the fifth form to the eleventh form. Uh, with my uh, fifth formers, I do sometimes use Ukrainian because, uh, as I said, we have only 45 minutes. And when I need, uh, when I'm losing my, my students' attention, when I see that they are not with me and I need to attract their attention quickly, I don't have time to wait until they just uh, understand what I'm saying. I uh, switch to Ukrainian, say what I need, a phrase or two, and then go back to English again. Uh, sometimes it is easier for them to uh, draw parallels uh, because very often uh, similar grammar or lexical structures, they are learning at the lessons of Ukrainian language, for example. And I find it sometimes rather effective when we draw parallels with uh, Ukrainian language. Uh, for example, word building, prefixes, suffixes, when they understand that they have the same in English, uh, they feel more comfortable. What textbooks uh, do you use at the lessons of English? I, I, what books? I think you meant textbooks, yes? So we use Wider World, uh, British, uh, authentic British books. Uh, so uh, we used uh, different types of textbooks. Uh, we used Headway, we used uh, uh, Cambridge books, uh, we used uh, Macmillan Publishers books, but now we are using uh, Wider World. Pearson, uh, books of, uh, for learners of English. Uh, can you share the E variant of grammar games books? Oh, that is a good question. And I would like to be sincere with you. We are speaking with you about uh, being, uh, like how to say, uh, being obedient and being uh, fair. And uh, I know that there are websites where um, teachers share links to PDF variants, to scanned PDF variants of different textbooks and methodological books for teachers. I do not think that this is right because the authors of the textbooks, uh, they uh, spent really lots of their time to publish these books. Uh, the editors also spent a lot of time to make these books perfect. And it is not fair, it is actually cheating when we scan the books and uh, uh, put them for free uh, to the web. Because in such a way, we uh, do not allow a uh, bigger audience to, uh, we don't, uh, do not allow them to uh, buy the books because they don't need to do it. They can scan the books and they can take it, uh, download them from uh, uh, some si websites. So I don't think this is right. It's better to uh, listen to, uh, for example, such events like webinars, like our webinar today, when teachers share 
some of the games with you, which they have used and taken from the books. As for me, I bought the book. I have the book that I, uh, I'm talking about, Grammar uh, Games, and I bought it uh, from the publishers, and I use it now. Uh, I think you can go to the library, you can borrow the book from the library and read it, and uh, your English language department at the, at the local library will have such books because they are very popular. Or maybe they will have the other ones. Uh, so this is my personal opinion, that it's like not really good to use PDF versions of the books. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'm glad that you share my opinion about... Uh, being right uh, about not publishing uh, the cheated PDF versions of the books. Uh, I would like to thank the Educational Project Now Rock for such a wonderful opportunity to be here with you today. Uh, there is one more question in the chat. Oh no, there isn't. It has gone. Okay, I think that I have answered all the questions. I hope that I have answered all the questions. Hope to see you uh, later during uh, other webinars, and I will be ready. I will be happy to share my experience with you. Uh, thank you very much for being with us today. Goodbye. Have a nice evening.